Hey guys, welcome to Tip Tuesdays. Today I'm going to be talking about 10 mobile app design tips. Mobile first is a really big consideration these days when designing. And while this is nothing new, I think if you've been designing a while, you'll get like what I'm saying and you'll definitely have been applying this sort of approach. This mobile first kind of leading the way you create content, mobile first based on the experience and mobile first in terms of how you deliver this to people whether it be a responsive website, a hybrid app or whether it be a native app. A lot of the same principles apply. Well, I'm going to focus less on the web browser experience. I'm going to, that's why I specifically said app um, design. I just wanted to kind of focus more on what can you utilize natively um, without having to consider the same constraints that a responsive website might give you. So, with that in mind, let's get started. The first tip that I always have to remind people about is that you really need to be very single focused in your design. You've got a limited area in, in an app. It's not a website. You don't have these high resolutions. You have a very small amount of space in which to display information and when you're asking people to interact you really have to put the most critical things on that screen one of those things that you really need to consider though is it's not even the size of the screen that you're looking at you have even less space because you have keyboards keyboards you know take up on most phones half the screen so you have an even more finite space. So if you took the viewable area and you cut it in half, that's the space you have. That's a really, really small amount of space. And when you consider that you have to think about smaller devices too, how much can you possibly put in there? So if I had to say to you, okay, you need to have an, um, a form in there. Traditionally, forms are these long things and, and on a responsive design, you'd be scrolling forever because it's really just taking the desktop version and, and scaling it down and making it this big long sequence of information that you must input and at the bottom you have a submit button. What I believe now is that you need to have a, what I call single focused um, forms, which is a message that tells you what you want to do. So for example, what is your salary before deduction? You need a title above the input field. You need an input field that is easy to touch. You need to have your button. That way, if the keyboard's up, you can still read all of that information. And that way you get people through almost steps of form fields that they need to fill in in order to, to um, complete the form process. Now this seems tedious to people, but when you take into consideration that people actually still have to scroll to find the next input field, and then scroll to find the next input field, and keyboards keep coming up and down, and you gotta keep going, and you don't know where the button is, and where the end of the form is, and where you are in the process, a single step um, single focus approach is a much better approach but this goes for any content you need to consider the information that's there if you're gonna have buttons you don't have them below the fold and below the fold on a phone is below the keyboard so you really need to think about the space that you have and utilize it correctly The next thing, which is relative to this, is choosing the right keyboard. With the amount of space that's available, you don't want to get put the full phone keyboard in front of people when all they have to do is insert some digits. Speak to your developers, find the right keyboard for the right information that you're going to input 
because it's going to be taking up on average half the screen and if you can save and shave off 10, 20, 30 pixels it could make a big difference to your layout. Another space saving technique is the logo. For whatever reason in an app people seem to believe that they need to put a logo somewhere on the top of the screen, kind of how websites have always done it. But guys, people clicked on your logo or icon when they tapped the button to activate the device. And there should be some sort of messaging in there and, and people should be used to your branding. So there's no need to stick a logo. If you have to, then make it really small and make it really simple. But I don't see a real need. I think it would be way easier to maybe just stick in a watermark in the background with your logo. Okay, the next thing is the buttons that you use. You need to make them bigger. The reason for it isn't just that your finger is going to touch them in. We don't all have dainty little fingers and we are also lazy, which is that we thump with our thumbs. So you do need to take into consideration that people need these bigger buttons. They need a nice big hit area. But what they also need is to be able to read the text that's on that button. And on your phone, it's harder to read. And if you were driving your car, not that you should be on your phone, but let's be honest, we've all done it. You shouldn't have dainty little buttons where you can't even read what the button's telling you to do. So definitely use bigger buttons because you can have larger text with enough padding around it to still make it look better. Otherwise you can have big text and this little button and it looks all cramped and that's not nice either. So that's a very um, poor design choice. Then guys, the first thing hmm. anyway the next thing is text text has to be legible you've got to be able to read what what's on the phone you can't make people squint and pull the phone even closer and the whole thing and you can say oh it's for old people i'm all millennial and and uh, therefore i can read all that tiny copy no guys you've got to think about where you're going to be using those things and when you're making important decisions like in a banking app or something like that you can't just keep making the text smaller you need to take into consideration the readability which is the legibility of the, the text that you use another consideration with text is the font you use you cannot use all of these sans fonts that's right those are the fonts with the little tails on the tops and the bottom you can't really use those as much inside apps because they don't render very well um, at smaller sizes, especially on buttons, especially where you really are pushing the limits of what a font can do on a small screen. So it's recommended that you use more of a sans serif and use the fonts that the operating systems use. Use something very similar. These guys have spent gazillions on uh, researching which is the most legible fonts for their devices. So just use what they use. People are used to it. Don't be ashamed. You can still use your brand's font in the logo or here and there in big titles and so on. But body copy at a minimum must be a sans serif font that probably the, um, the operating system uses. Another unnecessary thing is going and adding in photographs. Now, unless you're a showcase like Airbnb that is showing you different apartments that you can get or car, something like that, you don't really need a lot of images inside your app and especially cosmetic images. If it's not functional, it really shouldn't be there. And to say, yeah, but it, it's our brand. No, it's not your brand. It's an image. And while it might describe your brand pretty well, that's good for your marketing. But once people are in your app, you want to give people a much smaller app so that it's quicker, that performance is better, and it doesn't like bloat their uh, phone and really slow things down. 
Good solution, use vectors. Vectors are free, vectors are light, vectors are code. So please use vectors where you can and there are even solutions on iOS. The next thing is when you have menus, make sure that you have the right menu information at the right section of the site. You cannot do this whole, there is one menu to rule them all and therefore it will always be in the footer of the app. When you have apps that have got multiple different applications within that app, like a lot of banking and insurance apps, you could have everything from paying somebody to buying lotto tickets to checking information about your policies to ordering an uber there's many different things that you can do inside these apps these days and nobody has found the perfect strategy on whether you have individual apps which is bloating your phone with just too many apps or whether you have one app that serves everybody so with that in mind, make sure that you can build a menu system that adapts to the appropriate uh, content that is context aware. And so, for example, if you drill a layer deep into a process that you're doing, make sure you've got a way to go back, sure, but you've got to make sure that you have the right menu in there. You no longer, if you're busy doing um, a payment, do you now suddenly need the scan uh, option or no longer do you need the uh, update my profile uh, option you're in the process of doing something therefore have the appropriate menu in place the next thing to consider is that you can break the rules you can go and fight regulation if you just have a conversation with the regulators if you propose something else, at least hear what they have to say and understand their feedback. These regulators are not app developers, so they weren't thinking about each specific thing that you now understand or you could solve as a better solution when they wrote the regulation. And they are way more accommodating. They would much rather see the regulation uh, adhered to for the reasons it was actually originally put in place. So rather come up with solutions that really do work the system you know people talk about being recurred and fecurred and the whole thing and when you do that you realize that well if just with an id number it's amazing what you can what you can get which information you can get with that as long as you ask people to give permission for you to actually do um, a check against that id number or your cell phone number or your email address or any number of those things you know and then leverage technology like you know instead of people having to type in their address you give them the option to just say you know use my location i do this all the time through the browser so on an app you should certainly be able to do it where you can pick up somebody's location they can confirm that's the appropriate address for them and then they can get through these processes quicker you need to get people on the app guys the point is to get them in as quick as possible the longer you take you know uh, well the easier the chance that people are going to bail on you and actually close the app if not delete it entirely the next thing that i really think is hot right now and i think makes a whole difference on a phone is nice transitions and animations animations are good at directing you in a certain way and can really like help prompt things and can tell a nice visual story but transitions on the other hand can just make the experience that much slicker and that motion and everything will give them the delight factor it's the difference between them giving you a three star rating and a four star rating it's the type of stuff that people don't necessarily notice but they'll kind of go oh that was slick because let me tell you people do notice when something's clunky if people can notice when like one screen just goes to the other screen just goes to the other screen and there's no transition and there's no movement it's just like click 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 it's hard and it's fast and it feels rigid and it's icky and then just as a designer come on come on you need to just do slick stuff you should be proud and, and do cool stuff you need to make things useful for people 
I've mentioned this before in a lot of my videos that people don't want every conceivable feature that you can cram into an app. You need to put the features that people are going to utilize when they're using their phones, when they're out and about. Don't go and give them long forms to fill in. Don't go and make them like take pictures of the ID books or documentation that they got stored somewhere. You can, but I mean, you know, it's the wrong place for certain things. You know, you, you, you need to really consider the usefulness of what an app can do for people in the right environment. You know, context once again, it's very important to think of the correct context in which they're using the device and what would give them the most value. To declutter them, uh, definitely you don't have to have the kitchen sink in there. There's this big myth that you know you should just do things for the sake of leveraging technology. Like a lot of marketing type folk, they would probably put that in if they had an app. But come on guys, these products have got to be useful. As a final thought is learn the device's design language, I guess, or their guidelines. They really probably have done a lot of research into why they have certain behaviors and patterns. So go and read the material design um, site and go see all the things that are there. Go and understand their thinking behind animations and hovers and you know pulses and everything else that they do. And go and read the Apple uh, human interface design guidelines. These things are free, they're there, you have nothing to lose by taking the time to go and read those. I don't like material design all that much, I think it's completely lazy design, but that doesn't mean that there isn't some great information in there that could really improve the way that uh, you create interaction on your apps. And remember, these guys have tested things to death. And if they say that's the best way to do things, unless you really believe you've got something better to do, you might want to follow this stuff. You don't have to follow the design. You don't have to make your buttons look like their buttons and whatever. You don't want to do anything stupid. You don't want to do anything dramatic unless you've got something genius out there. But you, you do kind of want to follow like a lot of their thinking about things that people are kind of used to. People have already like they behave that way. It's natural for them. You don't want to go against the grain there. So yeah guys, just a few tips. I'm sure that I could do many of these videos. And if you have any questions, of course, ask me. And if you have, want to know um, anything specific about anything I've said, you want more detail, I already know there's uh, the whole single focus thing, definitely something I'm prepared to really elaborate on and really drill into. In fact, that it could definitely be one or more episodes. But let me know what you think, you know, leave a comment below and tell me your thoughts and if you like these sorts of videos let me know if you like tip tuesdays and if you like this sort of design advice or if there's any other advice that you would want thanks for watching subscribe hit that bell so that you get notified like leave a comment say something nice just say hello and stay cool